Good afternoon, everybody on Educated Economist here. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about Cantillon's essay on economic theory. And I was just reading a little bit out of it. I will leave a link down in the description for you guys because I know a lot of people have asked me where they can find the link to the essay. And it's pretty easy. If you just type into the Google search Cantillon's essay on economic theory, I think the Mises Institute is where I found it. And that's where I left a link to um, down in the description is to that uh, is to that it's that link to provide the PDF file for the essay. Um, but in this essay, I mean, some of the stuff that he talks about that Cantillon talks about is very relevant to the conditions of today, considering that it was written back in the 1700s. And now the big Cantillon theory is kind of centered around the Cantillon effect or the Cantillon effect is the way I like to, uh, a lot of people like to say it. I like to say Cantillon because that's the way he pronounced it. Anyway, this Cantillon effect is pretty much when new money comes into the system and how that affects the commerce and the people and the prices and everything going through the line. So the people who have first access to this money, they get to spend it at face value. So as this money enters into the system and starts growing more abundant, the demand for the products start to disappear as these people who have this new money are drawing away from the products that are available. This starts causing the prices to go up. Well, this is a burden on the people at the very end of the line who get the money at the, at the very end for their wages haven't gone up, but yet then now they're paying a higher price. But the people who have first access to this money, they don't really want to spend more of that money on the goods and services out there. They want to be able to buy those goods and services at the same price. They just want to take advantage of all this new money that they have. So what ends up happening is, is that foreign imports start coming in to compete with the domestic manufacturing. Now this puts an even more increasing burden on the very end of the line because those are the people who are working at those d domestic manufacturers and they unfortunately are no longer employed as the new manufacturing from foreign goods comes in. They're driven out and they're driven out because of their way of life. Right? Their standard of living begins to fall as the prices increases continue. If the new money continues to pour in, this effect continues to exasperate itself and drawing out ever more people away from the area and driving the prices increasingly up, bringing in ever, incomp ever, more, incomp gosh, ever more competition coming from foreign imports. So this is really the Cantillon effect, is that when you have this new money coming in, it drives out the domestic manufacturing, the inhabitants, and starts bringing in foreign production. That new money, those people, they want to live a life of luxury. And they're able to get this money usually fairly easily, whether they're getting it through debt trade and balances, new production, whatever it is that they're able to get this money from, they're living a life that's more luxurious, right? They want to increase their standard of livings. They want to have and enjoy the best things that they can possibly get for their money. So this ends up driving in a wedge between the two classes, right? You have those who have and those who have not. And as this effect continues to pour into the system, as this new money continues to come in, it drives that wedge ever deeper, separating the two classes. This is where you hear a lot of the great reset. That's what's taking place right now is that the the powers that be do not want to lose control. If they lose control, then they will have pretty much lost their way of life as well, and all chaos breaks loose as everybody falls into poverty and vandalism, or not vandalism, violence starts really kicking in as people start, you know, taking what it is that they need as opposed to trying to earn it. Everybody knows that all societies fall. There has never been a society that has risen without falling, and they all fall for the same reason. The new money stops pouring in. A lot of people don't realize it, but that's what it is. That's why they always had to conquer. They always had to strive to find more and bigger and, and take because if they didn't have this ever increasing amount of new coming in, then all the people who had pretty much taken the luxury, taken the efforts, taken the power will have separated themselves even more. So by taking from other people, you can actually build a middle class, right? This is why the, the idea of a middle class is like a strong economy. Ultimately, it shows that you can actually grow. Otherwise, if you don't have it, you have the wedge driving in and you have this wealth inequality that takes place. Anyway, I'm kind of spinning off on that. Honest prices. How does this occur? So as this new money is pouring in and people are buying these goods and services and it's starting to create more imports, this is where the honest price is found. Because if the domestic manufacturing cannot keep up with the demand, 
it takes whatever it comes or takes the foreign imports however it comes to compete to keep the prices from going ever increasingly up right so it supplies that demand the shipping from wherever it is that it's coming from that is incorporated into the discount from wherever it is that they have it so let's take you know something like just because it's a big topic let's talk about wheat for example now I'm not talking about the exact conditions of any particular nation but let's just assume that the United States was in need of wheat and in order to get more wheat in we had to import it from a foreign nation whatever the transportation cost was in order to bring that wheat in in order to fill the demand is where the honest price lands so the domestic manufacturing of wheat can go up in price only till it meets the, the availability of the foreign imports if that is not enough and the demand increases more foreign imports from further distances increasing the transportation cost will continue to come until it finally meets that price that honest price if they try to increase the price beyond that the domestic manufacturers will not comply they will compete they will say no we are offering a discount if you do not buy the foreign imports so it cannot possibly exceed that honest price that's as far as it can go no matter how much money is in the system honest price is the limit to which it can achieve now there is the oversold undersold kind of idea in which that the prices can go beyond that honest price but it will not exceed it for very long before the demand the demand the domestic manufacturing starts bringing it back down because it can compete with the foreign imports if you sever those foreign imports from coming in you can see that there is the availability for ever increasing prices. Make sense? See, you can have all the money in the world in here. If you have foreign imports competing, it can only go to a certain point, that honest price. After that, it's just a matter of time before equilibrium is found. Take a look at that. I believe it was chapter eight um, in Cantillon's theory where he talked about this and it's pretty interesting because he even talked about how this new money coming in should really be held back by the government like I mean they didn't have like governments like we understand it they had princes and legislators it, like not like we, what we kind of have an idea as far as what government would be like but it doesn't matter because ultimately he says not a, none of them understand this none of them understand what's happening and why the things that are occurring are occurring. All they see is this new money coming in, everybody's really happy, everybody's going into this luxury, buying houses and cars, and well, obviously back in Cantillon's day there was no cars, but they were, you know, living the life, like living it up. And this actual increase in luxury is what is causing the idea of the cycle into poverty. Because as people start moving into luxury, it makes it ever increasingly harder in order to achieve those things you need to live. This is where the separation of classes begin. So it's new money pouring in, the pursuit of luxury, and the fact that you have foreign imports that are competing, that are driving out the middle class, that drive out those domestic local workers, that lower the standard of living for most of the people. This is one of the things that we are experiencing here in Astoria. A lot of people don't realize that they go like, I, there was a huge forum that just recently took place in the middle of town to talk about the homeless condition inside of this inside of our area here but not one in those in that area could probably ever think about the Cantillon theory being the real reason why we were experiencing some of the things that we are here and the idea that there is a fix is impossible there is no fix it's a cycle it's taking place at some point the money will stop pouring in everybody will fall into poverty this is something that Cantillon is talking about there's nothing you can do to stop it it's part of the cycle what side of the wedge are you gonna be on because it's taking place now you can see it clear as day 
This is the reason why it's becoming ever increasingly harder for a young person to actually achieve any kind of level of success in this world because there is no there's no way to acquire it. You have to burden yourself with everything that you could ever possibly have. I mean, you can take on every burden of responsibility in your entire life. Like you go to school, get straight A's, go to college, do the whole thing, get a career, get the, you know, get a good degree, get a career, get out there and start trying and then realize that the home prices move up faster than you can earn money. How long could that possibly last? If you move into a condition in which that is not existing, then the burden of trying to acquire money becomes harder. Being successful in this day and age is very difficult. It's not like it's impossible. Right now, there is probably more opportune time to earn money than in any time in history. Most people just don't do it. They want to try and earn a living nine to five and have everything provided for them so they can spend the rest of their time really enjoying themselves. That's not the way it works. What side of the wedge are you going to be on? You're going to be on the lower end of the wedge if you do that. Anyway, sorry I went off there a little bit. I'm going to leave a link down in the description for you guys. I just thought that was pretty interesting about honest money and how foreign imports coming in really keep the prices from moving up any farther than what the honest price could be, which is the discounted price from the foreign importer minus, plus the shipping cost to get it in. After that, it just simply can't go any higher without at some point finding an equilibrium, no matter how much money is in the system. At least that's what Cantillon was saying. Interesting theory, I thought. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.